Well, welcome to the English Bubble. Um, today we've come to Harrow and Hope, and we've just been out in the vineyards looking at some very healthy grapes, and good quantities of them this year, and we had a little tour of the winery. We're now going to try and tell you a little bit about what organics um, and the way they're making the wines mean to what we see um, in the Chardonnay that we're going to taste first, Blanc de Blanc, 2018. Um, Henry, this is about to come out? Yeah, this looking to release this in November, end of November. Um, the 17 is being gone and yeah, this is the, this will be our last release from, from 2018. Okay. Uh, quite a watershed year for the English wine industry. You know, combination of yields and ripeness that we've never seen before. Um, so a lot of press has been talked about uh, for 2018, so it's good to finally get them out there. Now, you're saying 2018 you had quite good crop volume and quite good ripeness. 2022, similar or? I think on the ripeness front, arguably greater ripeness, um, okay. you know, because you're, you're ripening a smaller, a smaller crop. Um, I think, as I remember in 2018, you know, the crop was, uh, was so abundant that, you know, it was, you know, you had to be patient, you know. You can't just go on a year like that. You can't just go off numbers. You know, it's all about flavour ripeness. So, holding off uh, your picking date was was key in twenty eighteen. Whereas twenty twenty two, it all seems to be ripening so quickly. Um, the, the phenolic ripeness, the car, you've seen it out there. It's yeah, it's all coming together very very quickly. So, eighteen was quite a long harvest. Whereas this right. is going to be short and sharp. So you were saying it's sort of potentially less than two weeks this year. Uh, for us, it's going to be a week. A week? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not, you know, normally there's a lag phase between the, the Meunier, the, the, the Pinot, and the, right. and the Chardonnay. This year, it's all sort of all bunched up. Uh, yield does play a little bit. You know, the, the Chardonnay this year was you know, a bit lower in yield, so that helps ripen it and also helps bunch it up. So it's, you know, it's no bad thing. It means we can't enjoy harvest for as long. Right. But, you know, when it's ripe, it's ripe, and you've just got to get it off. Now we were just having a look at the, the Pinot Noir. Um, the Chardonnay was already picked when we arrived, but um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing in the winery to, to this wine in 2018. So, uh, Blanc de Blanc, actually, originally, and I, we weren't actually planning amazingly to, to release a Blanc de Blanc. Right. Because um, we were so focused on Pinot, that was our thing. Uh, but, you know, as soon as you start growing Chardonnay, you can't ignore it. It's, it's so much more. Uh, Reliable, you know, that old champagne adage every year is a Chardonnay year. I okay. think it's, <laughs> it is very true. Um, so, with this one, we've always uh, uh, tried to push a, a riper style, okay. bonk, bonk, you know, sort of more of a sort of Runa style. Mm -hmm. um, our very first 2013 was a real sort of that Runa, ripeness, apricot style right. of, uh, of Chardonnay. And uh, so we vowed, okay, well, we'll do a we'll do a blog to blog when we get that sort of flavour profile, and we've pretty much done it <laughs> every year, every year since. Uh, Richard, what are you, um, you've had a chance to, to quickly... I have, I couldn't resist. Yes. Um, <laughs> I am an admirer of this one. And I do like, what I find Henry and his team do really well, is they manage a relatively accessible style of blog to blog. Because so often I find blog to blog can take, it can just take quite a long time to really emerge, feel flavour to emerge. I think they make quite an accessible style early on. So I like already the fact that this already is, is very satisfying, quite yes. generous on the palate. You know how sometimes a blonde of one can be rapier like but when it's four or yeah. four years old. A bit citrus. This is a bit broader than that. There's a bit more to it. But I think it's delicious and yet I know from my own experience that if you want to keep this three or four years, you can. Um, because it, it, actually I'm trying to think of that, I think 2013 is what I've got it in for. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's, it's absolutely delicious. So you can keep it, but it's already, to my mind, a very satisfying style. There's a really striking toasty aromatic, comes whoosh straight out of the glass. It's, it's so early as well because, you know, this was only the scourge <laughs> um, in the end of, end of June. Okay. So really sort of early disgorgement. Um, Wines go in different directions, you know, you see them quite early or you see them quite late. This seems to be developing, you know, being quite approachable and open at, at quite a young age, which can be a, can be a good sign, but you know, they're, they're so individual that 
they all go on their own sort of pathway. Uh, but I think this will be when we release it in November. Yeah, I think people are going to be happy. So it's barrel fermented all of it, or? 50% uh, barrel ferment. Um, this has always been sort of our highest level of barrel ferment. Um, okay. You know, Chardonnay for me can take more uh, barrel than Pinot. And what we've learned over the years actually for the reserve element, we're, we're keeping more Chardonnay in barrel than Pinot. Just, it seems to be more robust from an aging and barrel point of, point of view. Um, and this is when we've started to move to the larger format as well. The early years, yeah, you could probably tick, pick up a bit of mm -hmm. oak character, whereas that larger format, I think, it just, you know, you get the, the benefit of that oak firm and that roundness, right. that textural yeah. element, but then you don't get that sort of, you know, the burly oak character. It helps you know. with the harmonisation of the wine, doesn't it? And you know, the, the fizz as well is supremely well integrated. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a softness, the acidity seems, yeah. I guess, maybe that's the oak textural thing. The acidity seems really quite soft and yeah. it's there, but it's not. Yeah, Tony used to say, you know, it's like, you know, you've got to see acid as a, a stake in the ground, and it's what you build around it that determines how you perceive it. Um, which I thought, I can always picture that, you know, and that what the barrel does, it builds those textural elements that, that integrates the, the acidity very, very well. So, you know, overall, I think we are slowly but surely building that, that barrel element, but you have to go softly, softly, because, yeah, you can, you yeah. can overdo it. Um, well, to me, for the new release, it tasted absolutely delicious, so, yeah. um, here's to, um, cheers. Here's to Long Swap, <laughs> 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.